Hi, welcome to the Scribe Studio. I'm Mark Walker, and I'm here with Nate Keefe. How are you, Nate? Good, Mark. Thanks. Thanks for coming in again, Nate. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Scribe Online RS, which stands for? The Replication Services. Right. And Nate's going to help us understand what RS is. He's going to give us a little demo of how it works, share some tips and tricks. We'll also talk about why you might want to use it and why it could be valuable to your business. So, Nate, let's start off with a little definition of uh, RS and okay. why, why we have it. Yeah, so the replication service is there to make a one-way transfer of data from your cloud CRM, your Salesforce, even okay. Marketo now, All right. uh, into a local database. And the purpose of that you know, is, is kind of out in the open there. So you can use that for reporting, you can use it for business intelligence, okay. you know, even data warehouse. All right, so it's for connecting to an online system you mentioned Salesforce, Dynamic CRM, Marketo, yep. uh, so that you can get a, a replicated copy of that database into some type of local right. database. Okay. Yeah. So th we have users out there who, you know, they're not really, they don't like the CRM reporting tool either. Right. It's not robust enough or it doesn't include their other systems. So the replication services is a great way to get it into a local database so you can use other tools out there for reporting and BI. And why wouldn't you use those other tools directly against the original location, like the cloud-based system, yeah. where those well, things those, are? Well, those databases aren't always exposed to the users and other applications out there. Right, okay, great. So uh, why don't we talk a little bit about the features and benefits? Okay, yeah, so the replication service, it's all wizard-based. It's kind of out of the box, so um, choosing a source connection like CRM, okay. a target connection, like SQL Server, and I'm going to be able to choose the entities that I want to actually make a copy of. And right out of the box, you know, you don't need to have SQL expertise to be creating a target for this database. It's okay. going to deal with those schema changes and net change all out of the box. So you don't have to be an integration expert to make this solution work. Yeah, for it. There's exactly. no, you don't have to do any mapping. Right. right. It's, it's going to do all the mapping okay. for you, take care of net change and the deletes of records. And I'm sure we'll give people a good look at that when we do the demo. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, now, what about requirements? There's always requirements of anything <laughs> you try to do with software, yeah. right? So, I mean, the first requirement, just to get into Scribe Online, it's a Silverlight front end, so any browser that can you know, support okay. Silverlight, yep. internet connection. Yep. Um, and if you're, you're copying it to a local database, uh, you're going to want to have connectivity to that database. So we've done that through our agent technology where you're installing our agents to talk to that database locally. Okay. And it's also going to communicate outbound to CRM, Salesforce. So you mentioned local database. Uh, what type of database does it support? Yeah, so we have written connectors for SQL Server 2008 and above, okay. including Azure, uh, right. Oracle database, and MySQL. Oh, so any one of those three will work as a target repository for this replicated data. Yeah, you'll yeah. want to use our connector. So if our connector, you know, you're using an older version of SQL Server 2005, you can't right. use ODBC. Okay. Okay, I got it. Uh, anything else about requirements? Yeah, so uh, when you're connecting into these systems, you're going to be using, you know, user authenticate. So we just want to make sure that the user on the source side has those rights to be able to read the data. And on the target side, we're going to be creating a blank database to write to. So we're going to want that user to be okay. able to create these tables and indexes. So that's part of the out-of-the-box part you were talking about, where the Scribe Online Replication Service is going to create the tables in the database for us. So that's yeah. why you need a, a SQL, say a SQL Server. Mm -hmm. You need a user that has the rights to create tables. Right. Okay. Got it. So let's kind of jump into the app here. And um, so when you're creating a new uh, solution. You're yeah. going to be choosing uh, Replication Services, RS. Okay. And it's all wizard-based, so I'm going to just, you know, I'll write in whatever I want to call this. Sure. And I'm going to choose an agent that's going to have connectivity to both the source and the target systems. So you were talking about before about agent installed behind the firewall yeah. that has connectivity both out to the cloud, to that whatever that cloud system you're talking mm -hmm. to, Salesforce, Marketo, Dynamic CRM, yep. but also can connect to that SQL or Oracle or MySQL database behind right. the firewall. Okay. Right. So you're going to need an on-premise agent. I'll choose my on-premise agent. And we won't go into it here, but installing an agent is really a Piece of cake. It takes a couple minutes yeah. to install. It downloads, you get it installed. It's pretty simple. It's Absolutely. Not a big deal. Okay. Um, so on the source system, I'm going to be able to create uh, connections to specific connectors that are going to support okay. RS. 
So out of the box, uh, your agents are going to come with uh, Salesforce and CRM. Okay. Um, you can also go out onto the marketplace uh, and find other connectors out there that support it. You know, Marketo, for example, it's going to have a little RS icon next to it. So right. I'll know that that's what's supported. So the bottom two, Dynamic CRM and Salesforce, are already installed when you put that agent in place. Right. But any other connector you want to use with RS, you've got to go to the marketplace, which is, it's kind of grayed out right now, but over on the left-hand side there, see yeah. the marketplace and scrub line. Okay, got it. So yeah, you're going to be connecting to these systems, just user credentials, mm -hmm. um, you know, everything you're used to with Scribe and, and any other third-party apps. All right. So I'll use my CRM online here. On the target side, it's going to be a database, right? So SQL Server is what I'm going to use here, for example. Um, but we're going to support MySQL okay. and Oracle. Got it. And those connections are going to look just like you'd see in any kind of management console. So on the entities, um, this is where you'll spend most of the time uh, selecting what you want to have copied down. So what is this list that we're looking at here? Yeah, so you have three options. So the first option is you can replicate everything from that system. And okay. that's probably not what you want to do. Can uh, I just stop you for a sec? So this, the list of entities here, everything that's showing below, that's a, a list that's sort of dynamically created from the source connection. So in this case, yeah. are you connecting to CRM? CRM. So this is a list of all the CRM custom and regular included entities. Yes. Okay. That's right. Sorry, you interrupted. And so <laughs> you could choose uh, all entities. And so that's going to be you know every single one of these, okay. um, whether you want it or not. Yep. Um, if you're just starting out your subscription or, or you're on a trial, you probably want to go with recommended entities. All uh, right. Because RS out of the box is going to be replicating the net change and deleted records. Yes. And so we have different detection patterns for that. Okay. And, and of course, you know, kind of the end is selected entities. That's when you know what you want. And so on the, uh, on the recommended entities, um, we're going to dynamically go out. We're going to look for a field that says, you know, when that record was last modified. On. Okay. So I'll have an account field that says last modified on, you know, today's day. And so we'll be able to use that when we're replicating as a high watermark to say this was the last time it changed. So only select the records from this entity that have changed since the last time I replicated. So it right. doesn't bring in all the data every time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing that RS does out of the box is it looks for deletes. So if a record is deleted in that source application, mm -hmm. we're going to go out and we're going to soft delete it in the replication database. So we'll have a column out there that tells you when okay. it was deleted. So you could do reporting on records that were deleted. Yeah, exactly. But you have to make sure that you incorporate that into your reporting scheme, <laughs> yeah. or you could be reporting on things that you don't want to right. report. But so, you do have the option to report on things that were deleted or to not report on them. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and so th those are the two detection patterns. And when we can do that efficiently, yeah. uh, we're going to just replicate the net change. Now, if we can't do that, we're going to replicate all of the records each time. Oh, so if we don't have one of those, you're pointing it out here on the screen, one of those modified, last modified on fields available right. in our source system, we have no way of knowing when it was last changed. Yeah. So we're going to bring that every, every yeah. record from that entity every time. Exactly. Okay. Um, and so you could see this. Um, in the Scribe Online Help, we'll be able to see um, the list of those out of the box, you know, recommended enemies. So I'm looking at CRM here on the screen. Okay. These are just the out of the box ones. Now, is that a static list of entities? I know it is in the help, but in real life, when you're connecting to CRM, or is that something that we do, we kind of figure out dynamically? We're going to figure it out dynamically. So if I'm going to replicate my CRM, it'll probably be all of these entities that I have plus my custom entities that meet the criteria of, for net change. Of not having the right types of fields in them to be... Exactly. Okay, I yeah. got it. Um, so how we're handling the deletes is, is different between the systems that we connect to. Okay. Uh, so for CRM, for example, we'll install a plugin. It's called, uh, if you were to look, it's called the Scribe Adapter CRM Plugins. All right. And so the first time you run it, that RS job, we're going to register the plugin. And for every entity that you are trying to replicate, we're going to do... Uh, SDK message processing step. Okay. It's a mouthful, but that's there looking for deletes. So if I'm replicating accounts, I'm going to have one of those steps on the accounts. So anytime I go out and delete an account, the plugin's going to fire and it's going to create a reference for us in a scribe. Entity. So if we're installing a plugin in CRM, that means that we have to have um, 
a user with elevated privileges right. when you're connecting into CRM. Exactly. Okay. So that's part of our requirements for that CRM All user. Right. Um, on the Salesforce side, it's a little bit more straightforward. They mm -hmm. have a call that you can make for each entity that says, you know, what's been deleted since the last time that we ran. So we don't need any of that kind of plug-in type architecture yeah. with, with Salesforce. Just think about, you know, the recycling bin that you have in Salesforce yeah. already. Yep. Okay. Um, and so each of these, uh, each of these um, descriptions here uh, for the entities. So yeah. we'll look at account for example. Mm -hmm. This actually comes from CRM. This is what their metadata description okay. is. Okay. And if I go down to you know activity party here, I can see right at the, after the description, yep. there's a note that Scribe puts in here, and it says that it, we don't support tracking deletes. We also don't have a field on there to track from that change. So that's a little additional data we've put into the description to let you know it's one that we wouldn't include in the recommended right. entities. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how I know visually yeah. looking at this. All right. So let me show you what it looks like on the target. So I'm inside SQL Server. I started with a blank database. Okay. My CRMO replication. And you have to create that empty database before you do your first replication, right? right? Because Scribe Align RS doesn't create the database. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, but it creates all the tables you got there. Yep, so all, all right. of these tables were created by Scribe, and these kind of represent the entity framework that we're getting from those APIs. So this isn't okay. really, this isn't a backup of your CRM. Right. This is just a, almost a copy of the data. Okay, and what about relationships between entities? Are those represented here? Uh, no, so we, we have the data, so I can, you can see on my query here, I've joined in, you know, accounts and contacts. Right. Um, but we don't have the actual SQL relationships. Okay. We do have, you know, all of your fields are in here, all right. of the, you know, converted data types. Um, so you're going to have, you know, day times and ints and, you know, right. those types of things. And ID fields if you have related entities that you wanted to join together like you're doing in your example. Yeah, I mean, these would be unique identifiers. Right, okay. Um, so kind of all the way over, typically on the right, we're going to have some scribe fields in here. Uh, we'll, we'll give you, um, you know, the scribe ID. You can see that's just the index for it. It's a little int. Uh, we have other fields here that mark when scribe created it, when scribe so, changed it. Okay, so this is pretty much whatever is in the source system that the API we're connecting to gives us, but we add a few fields on the end of yep. it. Okay. Absolutely. Now, what if some, I'm sorry, did you want to talk about that last one? Oh, no, so, so scribe deleted on, that just uh, signifies when that record was deleted. So if I delete this account uh, here on line two, mm -hmm. this will get a date time value for when it was deleted. If you delete it in CRM, yeah. next time it gets replicated, it'll have a date time stamp on scribe delete right. on. Okay, so what if somebody adds a custom field into their dynamic CRM system? What happens? Do you have to manually add that into your database? No, so we're, scribe's gonna take care of you know modifying that table. Okay. Um, if you're with dynamic CRM, uh, You'll, we'll actually look at the metadata that we have for CRM and right. compare it. So if we know that the change has been made, we'll refresh the metadata and we'll get that new field right away. Uh, if with, you're with uh, another connector, you're using another connector, right. we're going to have to reset the metadata and scribe online. All right. And how do you do that? So from the connection screen, yeah. you'll just select your connection. There's a button to reset the metadata. Okay. And then scribe's going to go out to that table. It'll actually alter the table and the column. Great. So once you get your data into this, Format the replication. Uh, how does it runs on its own? Yeah. So so the last step at the uh, solution is to um, actually go out and schedule it. All right. So it pretty much runs itself once you yeah. set the scheduling up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have you know kind of some tips and tricks here. You know after you've uh, set this up for the first time. Sure. So when I'm selecting tons and tons of entities, we're actually going to run them all one at a time. All right. So if you have lots of data. You know, you could have an entity that has thousands of rows, so or more. <laughs> yeah, or more, and and that could really kind of bottleneck. You know, if it's an A entity with lots of uh, records, right. you're never going to get to the bottom after a couple hours. Okay. So I always suggest splitting up the entities uh, into different solutions. Oh, so create two or three Scribe Online RS solutions. Select some entities for some of the solutions yeah. and other entities for right. the others. Okay. Yeah. And uh, those things can run simultaneously. Yep. Yep. Okay. And I just suggest. Keep the entities separate. Don't have accountant too. Yeah. Yep. Um, and one of the other nice things about it, we kind of talked about it when we were at the entities tab, is that the description talks about. You know, I know that this uh, activity party here isn't going to 
uh, replicate just the net change because of this note in here. Right. So if I'm going out and I'm selecting entities, I don't want to go through all you know a hundred of my recommended entities to select uh -huh. if I want to split them up. But maybe you don't want to use the recommended entities button that's on the top. Yeah, because that dynamically goes out and gets them all. Right. So what I can do here is I can actually filter based on the description. Okay. So I'll use you know one of these operators does not contain, and I know that all of those entities that aren't recommended have a note in them. Yes. So I click on that. This just shows all of those recommended mm -hmm. entities. And here I can go, I can select all 191 of them. Okay. Save myself some time. And you can see when I clear the filter, there's much more in here that I didn't select. Okay. Very good. Um, and then so kind of the last one, we just we talked about it a little bit. You know, there's a scribe deleted on right. field. You right. know, you're doing a reporting, don't forget to, you know, add some kind of criteria in there so that we're removing those if we really want to just report on those actual records. All right, great. Is there anything else you want to tell us about? That's about it, Mark. Why don't we just recap quickly about RS? So it's available on the Scribe Online. It's a yep. separate product from integration services. Yep. And the main point is that you would want to use it with which online systems? Uh, Dynamic CRM Online, yep. Salesforce, and Marketo. That's right. Uh, where you are in a situation where you want to make a local backup copy of that data right. to, to use for what? You know, reporting, BI, whatever you want to use it for. Okay, great. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed this session and found it informative, and we hope that you come back another time and check out some more of our videos to get more tips and tricks from our scribe experts. <laughs>